Hi, my name is Tom Flynn, and I'd like to welcome you and thank you for participating in this survey on evaluating primary sources. Today's activity will cover three basic topics. First, we will try to understand primary sources and their need in research. Second, we will determine what evidence can be and should be gathered while interpreting a primary source. Third, and lastly, we will be discussing how to use the primary source as a jumping point for secondary research. To understand primary sources, let's start with a definition. Primary sources are materials that contain first-hand accounts of events and that was created contemporaneous or simultaneously to those events or are later recalled by an eyewitness. To understand this a little bit better, let me give you some examples of popular primary sources. They can range from anything from letters to diaries, government, church, or business records, oral histories, photographs, videos, maps, land records, blueprints, autobiographies, and even artifacts. In many cases, newspaper articles are considered primary sources, as long as they are written using eyewitness accounts. The same holds true for Twitter, Facebook, or blog posts. They can be used as primary sources as long as they came from a witness of the event. Before we move on, let's take a second to discuss the relationship between some primary and secondary sources. It is important to note at this moment that some secondary sources can be used as primary sources. The important distinction is what you are researching at the time. Let's take a hypothetical book written by John Doe about the subject Joe Smith. If we were writing a research paper on Joe Smith, this book would be a secondary source. However, if we were writing a research paper on the works of John Doe, this book would be considered a primary source as it was written by the subject we are researching. This distinction is important because it allows us to see sources not for just what they are, but what they could be, all depending on our research area. Now that we have a basic understanding of primary sources, we're going to discuss a little bit about how to evaluate them. We will be using a method acronymed CAVE, which stands for Creation, Audience, Value, and Evaluation. At this point, it is important to note that not every facet within each of those subclasses will be applied to every item of primary sources that we come across, but they do provide a very good basis to evaluate sources no matter what type, whether it be a photograph, artifact, or written document. To understand the evaluation process a little bit more, as we go through each of the stages, we will be examining this photograph of Jackie Robinson, his wife, and several members of the Winston-Salem Teachers College as our primary source example. This will allow us to evaluate as we were. Now that we have our example, let's start with the first step of our evaluation, which is creation. What we're going to be looking for are answers to some of these following questions. Who created the item? When was it created? When was it published? Where was it created or published? These questions will give us some basic background information as to the author of the item. Using our example image, let's begin our evaluation process with its creation. Using some of the metadata, we discovered that the creator is Edward Simons. Based on the description of the image, we also know that the photograph was taken in 1954. Also using the descriptor and the title, we know that the image was taken at Smith Reynolds Airport, which is in Winston-Salem. This all paints a bigger picture of the creation of our item. This will help us discern further information through the rest of the process. Now that we've covered creation, let's focus on the second part of evaluation, which is audience. Here we look to answer several questions, included why the image or item exists, what was the intent of the item, who is the intended audience, and is there more to what it says on the surface? The document means X as supported by Y evidence. This we will discuss further with our example. Using the example once again, let's talk about its audience. Using the metadata, we can discover that this image was a promotional piece. It was taken to circulate through the community and the teacher's college to promote the visit of Jackie Robinson. Knowing that it is a promotional piece, the intended audience would be students, faculty, staff, and the community as a whole. In order to discover whether there's more to this image than what we can see on the surface, what we would be interested in researching 
is why Jackie Robinson was actually visiting Winston-Salem Teachers College. This will help us paint a bigger picture as to why he was on campus allowing this image to be taken. The third step in our evaluation may be the most important. It's the value. Here we can make inferences on the author and the environment, both social and physical. What that means is what was happening in the social climate surrounding this image or item. Is this item a part of a larger issue? What side of the issue does this item fall? And what is the author's perspective based on this item? These are the questions we look to answer to help discover the value of the item we are evaluating. When looking at the value portion of the evaluation, it is important to do some research into the subject with which we are trying to interpret. In this case, there are two things we might want to look into. First, Jackie Robinson. We know that in 1947, he broke the baseball color barrier. He won his only championship in 1955 and retired the next year in 1956. This gives us some insight into why he might have been traveling to Winston-Salem. Also, Winston-Salem, it is important to note that in 1956 and 1957, the schools integrated. This gives us a little bit of background into the climate with which Jackie Robinson was visiting Winston-Salem. So when looking at the value, some of the issues this image could relate to is integration, schools, or sports, athletics in general, and also on a smaller scale, since Jackie Robinson was here visiting at the request of the Alumni Association, we could be looking at alumni relations. We will do further research to discover what side this image might fall on any of the issues to help as a jumping point to our secondary research. The last step in this process is evaluation. Here we look to answer some simple questions such as what is left out of the item? Can the information be verified? And it is very important that we keep in mind that bias is not considered a limitation when looking at primary sources. Using the last step in the process, evaluation, on our example, the most important thing to consider would be verification. How can we verify that the information given in the description and the photograph are accurate? Well, first we could look at newspapers. Surely, such a famous baseball player visiting Winston-Salem would warrant newspaper coverage. Secondly, we could look for oral histories, or people alive during that time that remember the visit. Also, autobiographies. Somebody in the image or around may have been there and written about it. Other images. This will help us verify that it is in fact Jackie Robinson and his wife and the other members are who they are by verifying their images against others. Lastly, we could look for university publications for the visit. Why was Jackie Robinson here? Look for a program maybe describing his visit. These verifications will help strengthen the use of our primary source in further research. Now that we've completed the four-step CAVE process of evaluating primary sources, let's discuss a little bit about what you would do next. It is important that you would verify the information in this primary source, however you can. It is also important to really dig in and find the value of this item. Is there another item that proves more valuable to your research than this one? In some instances, this will be the case, and primary sources will not be used in your research because others are more important. Also researching the creator. This will help give a broader sense of why that person created it and will give some more context to the image you are using. Now that we've discussed how you would use this primary source, let's discuss a little bit about why primary sources are so valuable to research papers. Primary sources give a first-hand insight into times, issues, or situations that will help strengthen any of your arguments. It is important to maintain the context when using a primary source in a research paper. This will give the reader evidence as to why that primary source was used and how it's important. Primary sources allow a writer to create unique arguments and narratives on issues that may have been heavily written about. This will allow you to create your own unique perspective on a situation or argument. I'd like to thank you for participating in this walkthrough, and I hope it was helpful. Thank you.